So what is more autocratic? <laughs> There's no, <laughs> if, nothing if, more if than that. You're the original wolf warrior. <laughs> and we're now we're talking about Ukraine and everything like that. We've had so many discussions about this. All right, you start and then I'm going to finish. Start. Well, it's a very complicated situation, obviously. Oh, no, really? <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> it. 1997, when NATO started its eastward expansion, uh, I guess compressing what Russia considered to be uh, its breathing space. Um, yeah, but there have been guarantees. There have been guarantees given orally. Unfortunately, they oh, didn't so get we should, it. Oh, so we shouldn't, oh, if I say something orally, oh, you know, Mr. you should. <laughs> Mr. Lawyer, like <laughs> yeah. you said, everything yeah, but, should be put but, down but, black but and white. But this is serious. People really have to understand that Howard Baker, mm -hmm. all right, who was the Secretary of State, said categorically that the EU and that NATO would never expand into the previous Soviet bloc. Well, we also had American secretaries of state who take some, a little bottle of powder, of laundry powder, and say this is weapons of mass destruction from Iraq. Oh, I'm shocked. You, you, uh, you, you, you mean a country for, quote, security reasons will go in and invade another country? And if that country is the U.S. and it's Afghanistan or Syria, if it's, well, Iraq, yeah, Iraq or Libya. how about South America way back in oh, the oh, yeah. 70s? Uh, yeah, 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 that's they right. Were Granada and the Bay of Pigs. Uh, I right. remember that. Yeah. Uh, Granada, yes, yeah. that was a nice yeah. practice run. But I mean, it, it's, it, there seems to be a tremendous amount of hypocrisy there. And that, that's mm -hmm. what I'm getting at. And I agree with you. It started in 97 with the expansion. But, you know, what strikes me is 1991, you have Putin going and uh, speaking in German, not Russian, That's in right. German, all right, in Germany, in Berlin, to addressing everybody. He said, look, we want to be part of the European home. That's right. right. That's right. And then six years later, 1997, he gets up at the Munich Security Council mm -hmm. uh, conference, conference yes. mm -hmm. and says, You've cheated us, <coughs> you've humiliated us, you've expanded, I mean, you've done everything. We are now now dedicated to undoing the world order under the United States and its allies in, in the EU. You don't push a major country that is very proud to the corner of the room and say, okay, jump. Putin is a tough character. He yeah. certainly lo loves his country, but he also has a tremendous amount of nostalgia. He really yes. likes the idea that uh, he would like to reclaim Warsaw. Well, yeah. well, the USSR basically yeah, right. to do this. And you, how does China see that in terms of preventing that? There are those in the Western press today, and probably governments as well, talking about China is providing support for Russia. But w w w what does that mean? <laughs> Buying <laughs> Russian <laughs> gas and oil, and my answer is so the is Germans, Europe. <laughs> so is all Europe. of Europe. Forty percent. Have, have, have you noticed that they have not uh, gotten rid of? They have not put that last big tranche of of conditions on Russia. Why? Because they can't replace the oil. That's the gas. right. The gas. So and, and even even worse than that, even worse than that, all this talk about sanctions yeah. in terms of the SWIFT system. There are, I think, 230 banks, Russian banks, that's part of the SWIFT system. Oh, sanctions on five of them. Actually, it's up to 12 now. It's up to 12? <laughs> yes. Oh, um, they, when they is they it going to hit 230? <laughs> 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 yeah, but I mean, you know, we're, we're laughing about it, but it, it, it's, it's really serious. I mean, it, I, most it's people sad. don't know this. The SWIFT system, when it was created, was a way in which you could settle things. It was that's an international right. protocol, secure, bank to bank, how you send money back Not a forth. political weapon. It, and it was promised at the time. That's the right. The U.S. said, we will never, never use th this for political purposes. That's right. Never politicize yeah. it. And then... Well, they made a lot of promises. Americans have made well, a lot is, of promises. Is, and, but, but that's the nature of what we're talking about. If I want to lead the world, do I lead by doing the things that I say you shouldn't do, or do I lead by example? But let, let's go back to the mm. Ukraine situation. I mean, I, I, my understanding is in the 1990s, in the space of less than seven years, mm. they lost 60% of their GDP. That's right. Corruption was rife. Uh, then you had a series of, quote, elected leaders, each 
probably worse than the others, but still elected, right? That's right. And then you get the guy who's more towards Russia than in the US. That's what you get. And then they have a putsch. That's he, he's thrown out. That's right. That's what you get when you have so-called Western democracy. This is, is it Western democracy? Or are we talking just pure, uh, you know, uh, what I call the post-hypocritical -hip world? <laughs> that if the government, if you like the government, it doesn't matter what they are. They can be a dictatorship. They can be a monarchy. They can be a, a democracy or some form thereof. That's fine. It's just, just like um, you know, that conference where they pulled the like-minded people together no, under Biden. No, it's not and he didn't invite like democratic the, countries. He just invited the countries he can deal with. It's, it's more than a question of the a country you like or not. It's one whether or not you can control and you can manipulate, okay. you can manage. That's, I mean, and, that's, and this, that's this, the situation now. In the international press right now, everyone is trying to link Taiwan <laughs> to Ukraine. Ukraine. I, I don't know why. There are different countries, different settings, different relations with the U.S., etc. Isn't this just more of this let's tar uh, China? I mean, can you imagine? You, you and I are neighbors, yeah. right? And you start out rich and I start out poor, uh -huh. right? And then over the years, you don't take care of your house. I'm working hard. I make my house beautiful and better. So then you come over and you say to me, I don't like that. You don't do it the way I do it, okay? And then after constantly criticizing you day by day by day, all right, you come to me and say, hey, let's do something nice for the neighborhood. Yeah. You, you and I yeah. together, yeah. you know, climate change. Oh, yeah. you, you, you need to stop uh, Russia in its tracks yeah. because we criticize you every day for genocide, for suppression of people, for being a horrible nation, uh, for being an autocracy. But as soon as we have a problem, you know, you need to do something about that. It's even worse than that. It's laying the groundwork for the next round. And the next round is going to be focused on China. I think beating up Russia is one thing. But if Russia is weakened through this conflict, the next one to target is, of course, China. It's so beating you're, up you're saying China. that for, uh, for China, they, they have to cling to, to Russia as a fellow uh, country that is under pressure from, uh, from the U.S. Threat. No, I don't think so. I think in, in, in China's case, there are st several strategic considerations. Number one is Chinese need for energy. Yeah. yeah. Number two is Russia is part of the Eurasian landmass that is very much of what Belt and Road and the Eurasian growth story that China would like yeah, to... But, but isn't there a certain amount of trust that goes that way? How, how are they, these... Because there's been some ups and downs. There's question. been many up and downs, 1969, and yeah. even certain Russians talking about nuking China, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. So, and, so on. But and there's always been this fear that China, w the Chinese will start walking across the border. And That's right. Yeah. One has to make a strategic assessment of the situation. And the strategic assessment of China is that Putin is unlikely to bow down to America. Uh, never. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that his weakness? Isn't that's his like weakness. our pride won't let us uh, be, you know, give up our hegemonic uh, power? His is a sense that he doesn't give up this nostalgia. For he uh, is. Russia is two percent of the global GDP. Half the size of California's. Yeah, two percent of the global GDP. That's one part. So they he have, may have, have 1,500, yeah, yeah, strategic nuclear mis missiles yeah. and weapons. But let, let's look, in North Korea, and we have nukes. Where let's fire off a, a couple of ballistic missiles. At on Seoul, but it's is, not going to happen. Yeah, but uh, haven't we in the United States, in essence, created the monsters that we confront? The more you push, the more you're pushing them to, to the well, brink. I, don't, I, don't mean, yeah. I mean, literally created. I right. mean, Noriega, who did he work for? All right, Saddam Hussein, CIA. who did he work for? That's right. You know, we used to support... The Afghans. Afghans, well, that's another... That's, that's, that, you know, that's a long conversation. That's a 20-year uh, conversation, uh, or actually 30 years, if you go back to the Russian time. But, but, but even, I think for the, the Chinese Ayatollah, side... The Ayatollah, yeah. the Ayatollah uh, he was Khomeini. actually... He was in Paris. In Paris, but supported by us because we were holding him out. It's yeah. kind of to the shah. He says, you know, balancing, this guy, yeah. balancing him. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think uh, in the Chinese case, Marcos, Philippines. Marcos, 
<laughs> now his son is running. His it, son it, might it, win. I think in terms of strategically, the Chinese situation with Russia is that ultimately uh, the Chinese know very well that in their bones the Russians consider themselves Europeans. They yes. look toward that. Well, no, that 91 speech said we're yeah. looking forward to a European home. So it's very important for China to have at least some coordination of global positioning uh, on the China U.S. Is, side. It, it, okay, so this, this is one of the tropes that I hear all the time. Mm -hmm. China has a master plan to supplant the U.S. and impose its system on the entire world. Yeah. 5,000 years of recorded history. Aside from Genghis Khan and his son marching throughout Europe, but they he wasn't Chinese, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And then he came back. Uh, yeah, actually, that, that, left that, a lot that, of babies. That, but yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah. um, aside from that, China built the Great Wall to keep foreigners out. Has never attempted to go out anywhere. But you can then go the other way and say, hey, look, China's, uh, you know, it's fortress China. China's going back. I mean, there's all these calls. You know, it, the U.S. won't sell China chips. And then if China develops them, oh, you're being isolationist. That's right. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Do what's necessary to keep your economy it's going. It's all hypocrisy. It's just like, for example, ASML, the latest on that. ASML is the, the cutting machines for the chips. Oh, yeah. The, the from Dutch the, company. Uh, from the Dutch company, The yes. Dutch company. Yeah. And they were willing to sell, you know, old, three generations <coughs> old equipment to the Chinese. All of a sudden, they decided, oh, we better sell more modern stuff. Why? Because Chinese companies are developing their own cutters. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But they're, they're not allowed to. I mean, the, the U.S. has stepped in and said that it'd be a violation and we'll use... IP. Uh, yeah. No, it's not a violation. They have the IP. Mm -hmm. It's a Dutch company. Yeah. But we're asserting jurisdiction simply because we buy their stuff. That's right. And we control the banks. That's right. So is this about right or is this about might? Are we just simply imposing it's all about it? Everything so, with but, but, the U.S. Can, is about how? might. I, th I see it happening already with a lot of countries. You know, oh. Oh, you take a look at the Middle Eastern countries. Why are they coming close to China? Well, because China buys oil. <laughs> that's no, that's China buys their oil. U.S. used to buy their oil and gas. What happened? U.S. is now competing. Mm. U.S. is telling China, don't buy from the Middle East, <laughs> buy from us. Yeah. Screw you, you know? Yeah, I mean... No, when we talk about autocracies, we all, the, the assumption is that might is right, right? Yeah. You, you, you control things by just having the whip hand. And yet, yeah. when we actually are doing anything, yeah. <laughs> invading countries, telling Everything the U.S. Do, has done over the... It seems kind of autocratic, doesn't it? It's all a question of how big your fist is, right? 